The following will be Lesson 3, General Medical Q&A Dictation, 120 words per minute for 5 minutes. Ready? Begin. Question. Now, doctor, you are a physician duly licensed to practice medicine in Alabama? Answer, yes. Question. Doctor, when was the first occasion that you saw Mr. Davis, the plaintiff, in this case? Answer, I saw him for the first time the date of his admission to the Gadsden Hospital on the 27th of April, 1982. That was the day he was injured. Question, and would you give us a description of his condition at the time? Answer, when Mr. Davis came into the hospital, he was in shock. The shock was induced by extensive burns that involved the entire upper part of his body including particularly his right arm, the right side of his face and ear, and his right extremities. Question, is that the right or the left, doctor? Answer, I'm sorry, left. He did fairly well for about 24 hours until, because of extensive burns and the infection and dehydration that come from them, he lapsed into a coma. You see, the skin assists the kidneys in getting rid of toxic products. When the skin is suddenly put out of commission, as it were, by extensive burning, the kidneys have more than they can take care of and are unable to get rid of all the toxins. This retention of toxins in the body results in a condition called uremia. This is a common complication when you have extensive types of burns and often results in a comatose or semi-comatose condition. He remained in this semi-comatose condition for seven or eight days and in the meantime he was being treated for these burns. The burns were what we call the second and third degree type. The first degree being the redness that we get from the sun. The second degree is the blistering, and the third degree burns are those wherein the skin is actually destroyed. He has a destruction of skin involving particularly the rim of the ear, the forehead, the front part of the shoulder, the side, and the abdomen. These areas are still present and some of these destructive parts have begun to contract. The chief contraction is that in his left arm. The fold of the arm has been so burned that he is unable to raise his arm completely into the erect position. After he was in the hospital for a period until about the 1st of June, about six weeks, he went home to be treated by me at the office for a period of about three months. These dressings had to be taken care of daily or on alternate days. At the end of about three months, he required a great deal of physiotherapy in order to restore his arm to function again. At the end of December, at which time the treatment was discontinued, he had a residual of permanent scarring, permanent restriction of his left arm, and various other conditions. He has over his left shoulder a patch of scar tissue that measures 8 inches long and is 3 inches broad. He has over the front of the arm and the shoulder a scar that I could possibly cover by my hand about seven inches long and goes around the arm in a circular manner for nine inches. The axillary fold that goes on to the chest tissue has been so contracted by the burn that he is unable to raise his arm beyond the angle of 135 degrees, which is halfway between the erect and the horizontal, 
so that mathematically he has a loss of 25% of the use of this shoulder joint. The left side dashes. That concludes 5 minutes, 120 words per minute, lesson 3, dictation.